Well, hi guys, welcome back to a new early morning edition of Fishing for Memories. If you do enjoy the videos, do take time to give them a thumbs up, drop a comment, drop some critique, drop a query, try not to be a troll. <laughs> I know most of you guys aren't, so I haven't got to worry about that, but yeah, do drop us a comment and perhaps give the videos a share, help grow the channel, because it's always tough for smaller channels to grow on YouTube. We're fighting an algorithm that's ever, ever pushing us further down the channel and view list, so we don't get recommended. Any of the other smaller channels out there will know where I am coming from, and even some of the channels that are large these days, where they were growing from. They'll know exactly what I'm on about. So yeah, do take time to drop us a comment. Do take time to give them a share, give them a thumbs up. Come say hello if you're a new viewer to the channel. You know, break the ice, say hi Mark, or, or any queries regarding fishing, any advice that I can perhaps give, I will do so if you've got a question. So what are we doing? Well, it's early morning, isn't it? That can only mean one thing, surely. Even though I've got this hat on and the weather's been inclement, it is springtime, and that can only mean one thing. Red-eyed tench, this time on the float. Uh, what you can see here is a little Shimano Nasi reel. It's a 500 size, mainline six pound, and straight waggler as well. And just fishing with that set up on the lift method. Now you see in there a very compact rod. That's one of my Shimano STC, that's Shimano travel concept rods. They break down real compact. As you know, guys, I do quite a lot of fishing on my e-bike so I do like sometimes if I can if I'm not barbel fishing or if I can get a compact rod with me and I'm traveling I like to have a nice compact rod and these are superb they do the job well they're great for fishing in general they're known as a Shimano travel concept tele spin but they are marketed these days by Shimano as a rod you can keep in your glove compartment and use for even float fishing that's what we're doing today little waggler I might take the insert out of the waggler and put a night light on but daylight is coming and morning is breaking so I might leave that as it is but that is set up on the lift method so that we've got a nice little weak what I'd call a rotten bottom loop of line like you would have on your link leisure got the shot on there on a swivel locked in place so I can just move it up and down as and when I like to change the way that the um, hook bait's going to lay and my depth etc and the way the actual SSG shot or in this case I've got a couple of triple a shot on there which i might change to an ssg but that will affect being able to move them up and down with the uh, rig stops that i've got in place i can show you there right here that just means i can adjust very easily without damaging the line and more importantly because it's on a weak link should i get a really powerful fish or just a you know a really good scrap and the fish takes me under some snags i know unlike having the shot on the line I'm not going to get so much damage and ergo a chance that I'll get snapped up by, via the split shot cutting through the line if the fish does take me for a snag. So, simple setup. Fishing the lift method using a 2.7 metre Shimano travel concept rod. Shimano Nasi 500 reel. These, try if you can get them, and get them reduced, get them in sales, do so. They are smooth as butter. That was quick guys, we're in. How quick was that, eh? That was quick. That was quick. Tell you what, I can't fault that marginal, coarse margin mix. 
bloody hot stuff, I tell you, hot stuff. Still some more fizzing out there now. Problem is, my waggler's not laying 100% correct. Need to get the rod tip down a bit more. Well, that was a quick bite, wasn't it? Lovely looking mow. Beautiful condition. Laid the float flat, taking on a couple of red worms. One of those air injected, the other just neutral. No air injecting. So it just gives a wafting presentation um, on the lift method. Not a quick bite though, eh? Oh, it's got a set, of, set to it, mate. Look at that. Ooh, spoony, spoony paddles. Yeah, I'll just pull myself back. Beautiful, eh? Wonderful. I can see some more fizzing out there, and despite the commotion he's made, I think they've still got their heads down. So um, put a bit more of that margin mixing, and um, yeah, see if we can pick up another, another one or maybe another two. As I say, it's only a short trip, but what a start. Cracking. Teddy bear ride. Terrific. Oh, this one's going. Well, it's another hard fighting, muscly mounting. That was a good scrap, wasn't it, guys? I was getting a few knocks there. Just started to adjust the float slightly and looked away to get some ground bait, and the float was under. I thought I'd missed my chance, and then it lifted just slightly and sank under. It's a lovely looking fish, though. Beautiful paintbrush paddle, cracking dock hood to it. Lovely olive green tinker. 
another male though as I say hence that rather staunch and hard fighting scrap wonderful let's get this one slipped back and uh, yeah both fish fall into air injected red worm cocktail with a non air injected red worm beautiful Off you go. <laughs> well, the feeding's gone very patchy now. I've had a few little nudges and lifts. Uh, there's been the odd explosion of bubbles, but it's nowhere near like it was at the start. You know, so they've moved. I still think they're going to feed again at some point. But whether it's while I'm here, because it is only a short trip, as I said earlier, is another matter. Um, seen some fizzing further out so they have moved a bit further out but I did have a nice patch of bubbles exploding to my left here about half an hour ago had a few nudges and lifts uh, very half hearted Well then the feeding has gone sporadic, there's a few of those single and double break bubbles which I'm not the biggest fan of with tench, this usually means that they're going off the feed or they're just drifting off the area. Well, I do think they will come back on but as I said earlier at the start of the video this was just going to be a short trip and I'll tell you how short it's been, I started at 5 o'clock and it's only 7.45 now so 2 hours 45 minutes, 2 cracking mouth tench, can't say fairer than that but before I do pack up I'm going to show you the setup. So I'm just using a cheap and cheerful, this one's a uh, Clinefi or Linafi, a very cheap brand, a little crystal waggler, insert waggler, so I can take that off if I want and put a night light on it. That's locked in place with a couple of float stops, very simple. And then running down to there, you've got the following, that's just on the hook link material, you can see that, there's a Another couple of rig stops and a very weak link of line like you'd have on a link measure. And then I can just move those two shot up and down and there's just the shot that as the fish lifts and the float goes up, lays flat. Or sometimes with a lift method, you don't even always get that, you'll get a slight up and then the float will just shoot off across the surface or lift a slight dip and down. The only reason, you can pin the shot on the line like I've done in the past, the only reason I didn't want to do that really anymore is because quite honestly if I get a fish that runs me into a snag these are snap off or slide off and these soft rig stops they'll move up and down so the idea there is that I can adjust where the um the actual weight setting is and at the same time I haven't got necessarily got the same risk of losing a fish these are nice and soft on the line and this being a rotten bottom says me as my camera starts to move away <laughs> and this being a rotten bottom on the link a weak link That'll snap off and hopefully the idea is leave me connected to the fish still. But there you go and you can just adjust that very simply. Look, you can just move that up and down. As I say where you want to have the shot locked in. That's as simple as it gets. Thankfully on this trip the rud weren't being too much of a nuisance. I do love them but <laughs> the smaller ones can be a nightmare when you're trying to get through to the tench. That's a specimen gauge hook. That's actually a 12 two lovely little red worms one of those as you can see that top one is air injected and the bottom one isn't so what that does is just as it's on the bottom I've got it injected with just a light amount of air not enough to pop it right up but enough for it to just nestle on the bottom and almost be like critically balanced so it's just wafting but yeah that really paid off this trip and they were really feeding when I arrived put a couple of balls in probably probably did overfeed slightly I'm not a big fan of overfeeding tench anyone who, I, who, you, who knows me who I've spoken to and given advice about with tench fishing I don't always like to pile too much bait in but I did on this occasion I think put a couple couple balls too many in and um, whilst it was superb and we had those two lovely male tench I feel that played a part in them just going drifting off the feed but I also do feel that the feeding conditions at the moment personally I'd like it a lot warmer I'd like it very humid and um, 
I do feel if it was like that, they would have stayed on the feed a lot longer, been really rooting about for a lot longer. But as it is, given that I've been here, what, two, two hours and 45 minutes, you know, can't really complain, can I? And it just goes to show you get it right, get your all your setup correct, and you can pick off a couple of quick fish, even in what I'd call sporadic feeding. Now, if I did stay on, I could probably wait and they'll patrol round and come back through the margins again. But you know what, I'd rather, you know, not quit while I'm ahead, but quit early. Just do a short trip as I was going to do anyway, and come back on another trip on the um, lift method. Might bring the um, quiver tip, but probably lift method, because it's a delightful way to target tench. Enjoyable watching the float. I mean, I did have a few more nudges, little lifts and little downs, but very half-hearted, almost crucian-style knocks. And um, that really showed that they were going off the feed a bit. But I think I will get down on another trip. Anyway, I'm going to pack the rod down. Once again, if you missed it at the start of the video, this is a Shimano Travel Concept Telespin. I got it wrong at the start. I said it was a 2.7 meter version. This is the 2.4. This is the shorter one. Little Shimano Nasi reel and basic lift method fishing. Hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Drop a like. Do, do take time to drop a comment if you've got any queries regarding the setup, regarding tackle, regarding baits, regarding ground bait, etc. Please don't hesitate to drop a comment and I'll try and get back to you ASAP. And as I say, as always, it's a pleasure to bring you these videos. I really do enjoy making them, even these shorter trips. They're really wholesome, especially when you get two cracking looking male tench like them. Absolute corkers. Anyway, guys, till my next video, take care. And wherever you're fishing, I hope you're having a good, good crack of the whip. I hope you're getting a few tinkers as well, even though the feeding could be a bit better right now. I do think spring's a little bit behind again, just like last year. But hey, stick at it and you'll catch them. See you on another video. Take care. Goodbye.